Hello friends, welcome to BSA Agriculture. If you are coming to my channel for the first time, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Your subscription and likes are always motivating us. If you have any doubt, please comment in the sections or else you can be able to join us in our Instagram, which is in the description and you can be able to ask your doubts in that Instagram channel. So let's move to the video. In this video, we are going to see about fundamentals of entomology. I am going to cover the glandular system in insects, which are used to combine the exocrine as well as the endocrine glands and also the functions of those glands. So while seeing the glandular system in insects, they are said to be classified into two types, which are said to be known as the exocrine gland as well as the endocrine gland. So the exocrine glands are said to be the presence of duct as well as the endocrine are said to be with the absence of duct. The gland, so you must need to remember those points. And the glandular system is said to be known as the secretory system of the insect. So they are mainly classified into two types, which are the exocrine as well as the endocrine based on the presence as well as the absence of duct so you must need to remember and while seeing the exocrine gland which is a ductful gland they can be the, these glands are provided with duct as well as the discharge of the secretion outside the body or else into the lumen is said to be happen so the glands are cephalic gland dermal gland as well as some other glands so while seeing first about the exocrine glands of a honeybee worker for an example to study about the exocrine gland in the insect body you can be able to see the duffers gland, head salivary gland, hypopharynx gland, mandibular gland, nasnov gland, thoracic salivary gland, venom gland as well as wax gland. So these are the glands which are said to be present in the exocrine glands of honeybee worker. And uh, I have given as a diagrammatic portion of those glands in this picture. So you can be able to see that. After that, I have also given another example of the exocrine glands present in the ant. So first of all, I am going to explain about the cephalic gland of the insects. So they are said to be a yeah, frontal as well as the mandibular glands. So it's where the place these cephalic glands are said to be present. In frontal glands, they are said to be a yeah, sticky defensive fluid is said to be present in nasty termites as in well as in mandibular glands. They are said to be small glands which open near the base of mandibles, which is usable for achieving in the insects. And in larva of Lepidotra, they use it to secrete a saliva, which is a salivary gland, which is used to be modified as a silk gland for the silk production in the Lepidopter and larvae. And in honeybee, the mandibular gland used it to secrete an alum pheromone, which used it to produce the cune substance in cune bees in the hive. So after that, the maxillary gland, where the secretions are said to be used for lubricating mouth parts of columbula protula as well as the larva of neuroptera it's where the maxillary gland is said to be present and the pharyngeal gland where the secrete bee milk as well as the royal jelly in the worker honeybees especially specialized one and after that the dermal glands so they are said to be comprised of wax glands so they are said to be unicellular as well as the multicellular structure which is distributed in the various parts uh, wait a minute which is said to be distributed very parts of the integument to secrete wax as well as in which is said to be present in honeybees cockets as well as the mealy bugs so these are some of the examples of wax gland producing insects and after that the lac glands so these are the glands said to be present in the epidermis of the cell in insects which use it to secrete lac as well as resinous substance in the lac insects especially in lasper laca is an example of the lac gland presenting insect and after that the depictorial gland which is a stink gland which is mainly uh, used for defensive mechanism in most of the bugs so example in stink bug big bugs as well as in citrus butterfly caterpillar they use it to use this epitorial glands for its defensive purpose as well as in coleoptera they are used to have a complex pygmedial gland which is used to secrete a yeah, pungent as a corrosive material in those co coleoptera insects and after that there is an attractive gland classification where the glands use it to secrete the pheromones of the attractive gland so the scent gland which is uh, used by the in the scales of lepidoptera as well as the abdominal scent glands which is used in the female lepidoptera like single form as well as the indian meal moths so they are said to be in the pheromone glands as well as in scent gland they are used as androconine is a compound which is responsibly produced in the scent gland and after that the poison glands which is uh, used mainly for the defensive as well as the attacking purpose in the predators so they said to be 
modified accessory glands which are used by the O portion of sting. Example in honey bees, the worker bee used to secrete venom on their O portion as well as in wasp and the cetal glands. So they used to have a glandular city which is a scoli which secrete irritant fluid in hairy as well as slug caterpillar in some insects and the tenon hairs which is used to secrete a sticky flu fluid which is found in the punnel of the legs as well as helps in the sealing walking of house flies as well as the mounting gland which is said to be present in the glandular epidermal cells of the most of the larvae which use it to produce a molting fluid helps in the molting process of many insects as well as larva and the milk gland which is said to be a modified accessory gland which is used for nourishing a larva developing in uterus of many insects example sheep cat which is a sheep bot fly so it used to have a modified milk glands and uh, the duffer gland where they use it to be gland at the back of the abdomen in ants for the trial marking of pheromones so it's one of the important one in the ants life and the other glands which are said to be a labial gland the first one which is also known as the salivary gland which is said to be present in the thorax as well as the either side of foregut which used to secrete saliva from the salivarum gland at the base of hypopharynx for their digestive purpose as well as the single gland where they used to secrete a silk thread like which is said to be modified by the labial glands in the caterpillars of lepidoptera as well as in dermal glands in the epido embryoptera as well as the malphigian tubules in neuroptera and uh, after the finishing of exocrine gland now we are going to enter for the endocrine gland so these are the glands which use it to have the absence of duct so they are said to be known as the hormonal production glands so they are usually diffused in the blood as well as transferred to all parts of the body and uh, most of the glands occupy in head as well as the rectocerebral glands so of the insect uh, their secretion used to play an important role in controlling of the molting process as well as digestion exo enzyme secretion as well as morphism metamorphism and other psychological effects in the insect so they are mainly the endocrine glands are said to be present in neurosecretory cells corpora cardica corpora alata prothoracic gland as well as the basement ring so these are the places where you can able to see the endocrine gland so i have given a small picture of the neurosecretory cells as well as corpus cardica as well as corpus alata where they used to produce hormone uh, which is a juvenile hormone which is said to be a reason for the molting process as well as the development process in larva to the adult butterfly so the endocrine glands are said to be mainly useful for initiating some of the process in the insects and um, i have given the frontal mm -hmm. as well as the rear view of the insect brain where they used to contain the endocrine glands which are used for controlling the neurosecretory regions as well as the secretions made by the insects and uh, after that while seeing the first one we are going to see about this uh, neurosecretory glands they are said to be arranged in clusters with a pair of intracerebellus as well as the procerebratum in more of the lateral group of each side of the insect head and the secretion which is a PTDH bursicon is the name of the hormone which is used to pass through the axons of the cell and discharge at the ends of, ends of the axon so it is how the tra they are transferred to hold through the insect body and uh, the neural secretion used to activate the prothoracic gland to secrete Ectasome, where you can, uh, we have already studied it as a molting hormone in the before lectures. We can able to see it in the end of the video. And after that, we are going to see about the corpora cardica, which is said to be a pair of gland uh, under the singular form. We they are said to be lied in close association with the axons as well, so of the neurosecretory region. And each are said to be connected with the, the protocerebrum with the pairs of nerves and to be the hypophangal ganglion of the ventral nervous system as a single nerve in the insect body. And the carpa cardica stores and slowly release the hormone, which is a PTTH in the neurosecretory cells of the brain, uh, as well as it is said to be absent in the columbola insects. So please remember it. And after that, we are going to see about the carpa all data. So these are the glands which are situated laterally behind the brain 
and usually near the corpus callosa are present in all of the insects it uses to secrete the adrenal hormone which is a to be known as the neotenin which inhibits the appearance of the adult character in the developing insects and it is also an important reason for egg maturation in ovaries as well as the functioning of accessory reproductive glands of both sexual only male and female insects and at the end of juvenile life they used to be formed with a corpora letra which becomes less active so the adult features which is developed in this process so the juvenile hormones are said to be tetrotrans which is said to be denoted as jho on the leptoptern hatch as jh1 and jh2 in the caterpillars of leptoptera as well as jh3 in most of the insects so based on their age the juvenile hormone production is said to be modified in each and every insect so jh analog is an interface with the insect development of each and every stage of insects after that the prothoracic gland they are said to be true laterally placed glands which are said to be often lying in the anterior thoracic region in the immature stages and it used to degenerate in adult except in silver fish so they are used to in have different metamorphosis than other insects so it used to secrete the dysom which is a molting hormone in the insects and they are also called as the thoracic gland as well as the precordial gland as well as egg dysel and ventral gland in different insects so the person who describe these glands are lionet who used to describe this gland the egg dysom which is crystallized in the form of 1954 by bitterndent as well as the carlson you must need to remember those scientist names which can be asked in the exams and after that we are going to see about the weismann ring they are said to be the maggots of true flies present in the maggots of true sorry, flies which do not have the recto cerebral endocrine gland so instead they are used to have a small ring like tissue which is supported by the trachea of the aorta so which how where they used to change stable in the position of the insect body and used to control the metamorphosis similar to the corresponding glands of other insects so i have given the lecture notes in description if you have any doubt please comment in the section or else you can able to join us in the instagram so if you like the video like it and share it with your friends and subscribe to bsc agriculture and hit the bell icon to get regular updates so thanks for watching the video i will catch you up in next videos